Hey, how's it going everybody? So, it's uh, pretty late in the evening for me, but I know Ubuntu just released a new version of their um, distribution. So I wanted to kind of cover what I've heard other people th like talk about, such as uh, DistroTube, for example, and, you know, some other people. I'm not going to do any videos this time. I've been up since 1 o'clock because my daughter just loves waking up in the middle of the night for some reason. But anyway, um, what I'm going to talk about in this release is kind of getting away from the store lock-in idea. So I'm a firm believer that um, these app stores quote-unquote app stores, are a great way to discover new software. And if they're done right, they can have a lot of good features, such as being able to collect payments and being able to store um, some of that stuff on their own servers if you need that for distribution's sake. Or, you know, there's just a ton of different reasons why it's a good idea to do. So... I'm going to go over these four different choices that I've got available to me right now. There's a lot more. Um, obviously, you know, Plasma has their own uh, quote-unquote store, uh, place to discover new software and read other people's opinions about it. Because, you know, that's one of the reasons why people watch YouTube. They want to they wanna learn about different people's opinions, such as DistroTube or, you know, potentially even me. So... Yeah, um, let's just start it off by talking about Ubuntu. Ubuntu is doesn't seem like it's really focused on the desktop as much as it was previously. Um, you know, they, they did have Unity. They did have a push for television. They had a push for a bunch of different stuff. And it just seems to me like uh, they're a little bit more focused on actually making money on Ubuntu and seems like the focus is more server uh, related things and the desktop is maybe an afterthought. I know they they probably still have a lot of uh, dedicated people who are really interested in the desktop so I'm not going to try to say that you know nobody is. It just doesn't seem as if they are um, anymore uh, because it, it kind of shows you know in a lot of the software that they publish it doesn't always work right. And if you watch DistroTube's video, you're going to easily be able to see, you know, it not working quite right. So up here on the top left, we have an example of it not working quite right. Um, and, I mean, this is two different software stores technically because one was kind of like a fork and they've, kind of messed it, messed with it from the stock GNOME. And they have these categories down here. Um, these categories, you know, don't really load very well, but they do eventually load if you, just depends on your internet connection, when you're doing it. And, and uh, I mean, it's just not, uh, it's not super quick. I don't know why they don't have some of this stuff um, maybe on some kind of CDN or cache better. And I'm sure there's lots of technical reasons, but it, it's not too bad. But it does seem like the, the loading indicators should be moving or something so they, that you know that it's still working on something. Um, if it doesn't show the user that it's doing something, it's just going to look like nothing's happening. It's broken or something. And that's kind of what the store does. So this, this store here, just so we can be clear, this is the uh, Ubuntu, uh, GNOME Software Center, and then this is Ubuntu Software. So the one that's working right now looks like um, the GNOME Software Center. I usually always just use GNOME Software because uh, it has more support for different package formats like Flatpak out of the box. Usually you can easily install it and... I just prefer getting software directly from the source usually of the, the people who are developing something because it's going to be the way that they intended it to be. Um, 
not that you know forks are bad or anything it's just you know um that's just what i prefer so for this i mean you can already see on the ubuntu software center it's showing two calculators um, i looked at this previously and so you see here it has the sources as being one of these uh, calculators but then it doesn't show the normal deb source when you switch but if you go back your it tells you that you're you have the deb installed you don't have the snap installed so this is really funky way to do stuff um another weird thing is that the the reviews are kind of sporadic and they don't load very well you can you can click on some of these things but it's not really clear what what it's doing it just kind of like does something and then disappears kind of it's weird um there's just a ton of problems it's just not really it's not done really well and it seems to me that gnome is hyper focused on design and ubuntu maybe focused on you know the server or you know integrating different uh partner technologies like flutter or you know whatever kind of uh project that they can get to generate themselves revenue rather than the actual desktop um that's just the way it seems to me i you know that's just i can't really say much more on that um their push for snap packages i don't agree with i've already I think i've already spoken about that um and you know between these two pieces of software it's pretty easy to tell that not a lot of thought has gone into design because even even when you scale this up it doesn't you know respond by adding more items and rele recent releases it doesn't tell you the dates of the releases it doesn't tell you you know a lot of pertinent information that you'd want to know i mean they do have these pictures here and that's nice they don't expand i mean there's there's lots of problems with these software stores if you want to call them that and uh i mean i kind of use it loosely because i think only elementary os is actually has a store where you can make purchases on i i might be mistaken on that i i remember that ubuntu used to be able to do that but i don't think you can do that anymore so i mean this is kind of where it's at with you know flat hub or ubuntu debs i mean they all have their own sources that they prefer on each one but none of them really work really well i mean sometimes you can get lucky and some of the, the flat packs work well and they're made actually by the upstream developers that are developing the application but sometimes they're not they're just packaged by some random person um so this one you know developers D discord um it appears as if this one was submitted by discord themselves or at least pulled from their their build system and placed in this kind of uh searchable registry and uh so i mean some of this stuff bitwig studio doesn't seem like it has um any indication about who who set this up or who who uploaded this package it says that it's sandbox which is cool um it doesn't have system integration we don't really know what system integration what they mean by that because you can't click on it there's no information about this it does say localized in your language but it doesn't say what language i mean so there's lots of just really lack of attention to detail on this stuff i don't know why just scrolling doesn't show more why do you have to click the button and then is that really all the reviews that it has you know it just seems like you know it's uh it's not really fully flushed out and it, it just shows i mean it does work a lot better than the ubuntu because ubuntu's software center is just totally not even showing me anything um i think they fixed that in the new version where they actually have these categories listed which they probably just pulled from gnome and gnome actually has these pulled up and it's kind of working so yeah i mean a lot of stuff doesn't work but on the other hand that brings me to the app image related stores so i'm kind of an advocate for app images i mean i i will i'm a pragmatist so i will use snap i will use flat 
packs if I have to, if that's all that's available. But I do prefer app images just because I like the, it seems distro agnostic. It seems like it's just, it doesn't care about the distro. It just wants to get the, the newest application working on the user system. Um, a lot of misconceptions around app image. They think app images can't um, be confined or sandboxed. They can. Um, there's a lot of other misconceptions such as space. Uh, I, I think I've already talked about the space difference with LibreOffice as a test case with FlatHub as a comparison. And FlatHub saves you about 35 megabytes in, in total. So it's not a huge difference. And it's not really worth the extra... Um, time or headache and or resources to to do what it's doing basically so this is a new one that I just discovered this is app image uh, tools I think is what they're calling it something like that I'll, I'll put a link in the description um, but this one's made in flutter they're trying to mimic the gnome theme obviously it doesn't look exactly identical gnome gnome kind of has like uh, drop shadows and a few other things that this one doesn't have the button size is quite aren't quite matching up, but you know, it, it does mimic it pretty well. And this is just made by one person, I, I think. So, I mean, as you can see, just the one person making this app, they have everything's deferred, individual images are loading. So that's, that's kind of cool. I mean, Firefox loads up pretty well. Um, you know, there's, there's still a lot that the other software centers have that this one doesn't, but I mean, you get the idea. If you need a universal package manager or software discovery store, this one doesn't, it's not too bad in the eyes if you like the, the GNOME styling. And uh, I think it's just, it's fast. It already has all the applications and then kind of loads the icons in a deferred way. You know, that's, that's a really efficient way to do it. Um, they have different different applications you probably never even heard of before just because the way that's laid out, it's like maximizes the view of seeing the icons, almost as if they're installed on your system already. And uh, this is a more, I guess, developed uh, store, if you want to call it that, because it's more mostly just like a web browser inside of, uh, you know, uh, a little app. It's basically a web browser. So you get all the stuff from opendesktop.org, which has... You know, tons of contributors for uh, all different types of desktop environments. And you can install, you know, app images. But it, with that said, it's not just app images. So it's a little bit more complicated and it's not quite as intuitive. But it is more mature. So, I mean, if you were to go to one of these items, you see a lot of, you know, useful information. You can see files, what the files are. You can see the change logs, the ratings and reviews. Um, you can even go and look at the user, how, how long have they been active for. I mean, there's just so much more information that you're going to get with something like this compared to, um, you know, one of these G, uh, GTK applications that it's just not going to be able to beat the speed that you can develop a website basically which is what this is it's just way faster to make slap website together with html javascript or whatever um you know some some dynamic language where you're you're loading the pages it's just going to be way faster um i mean flutter that's also kind of kind of web based i mean it's it's a cross platform kind of code once deploy everywhere type of thing so it kind of follows the same vein as you know um web a web page which in my opinion is probably one of the most um, developed ui toolkits that exists just because the nature the importance of the web it just had so many so much iteration so much work on it compared to any other desktop ui granted you know uh, it doesn't have like a set set of standard looks sometimes so it doesn't integrate nicely but um, that's kind of beside the point of what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to show these different um, software discovery app stores, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're pretty cool, and there's a lot of good ones. Um, Bundu Push and Snap is kind of 
it's unfortunate, but you know, whatever. Uh, Canonical's always done things the way that they've wanted to do it, and usually it doesn't really work out. Uh, so far, at least in my experience, from what I've seen, um, pretty much everything that they've decided has always they've always changed their mind later on and gone with the rest of the community. So, you know, they're probably going to end up doing that with Snap. Maybe not because it's kind of tied into uh, the server space. So I'll, uh, I'll quit rambling on here and I'll let you guys go. And I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you later.